So here are a few pieces that I do recommend for using a leather. Um, on the left-hand side, there is this EcoFlow Leather Weld Glue that is a white glue that is extremely effective if you are binding leather to leather. Um, anytime that two leather pieces need to come together, such as this is different layered pieces of leather, um, I usually go straight to this EcoFlow because it's non-toxic, it's water-based, and it's very, very easy to use and clean up. Um, the other option is contact cement, which is very toxic and very difficult to use and clean up. So um, that is still the best option for any time that you are <coughs> binding leather to anything that is not leather, such as attaching the leather belt buckle to the actual metal belt buckle plate. Um, if you've never used contact cement before, the most effective way to do that is by applying thin layers to both pieces, allowing them to um, cure for about 15-20 minutes and until they um, lose their tackiness and they become a little bit shiny. And then you sandwich those pieces together and they will bind on contact and get an extremely strong hold. Um, the downside to using any of these contact cements is that they're, like I said, extremely toxic. You will want to use a respirator and work outside, and I'm not talking about like a little paper mask respirator I and mean, something that will filter chemicals out of the air, um, and as well as protecting your hands and potentially using a brush or a, a, a popsicle stick or something like that to apply it. All right. Um, wet molding is an awesome technique that allows you to shape leather. Um, if you have experience with, oops, if you have experience with, say, like thermoplastics or with making foam armor, um, you use heat to shape these pieces and get them to take on a new form. You can do the same thing with leather by using water and controlling the water content of your leather pieces. So. This is um, some toe caps and a pauldron that I made or in process in these shots. And these are just pieces of leather that have been soaked or sprayed with water and then stretched over whatever object I'm trying to shape them to be. So I have these boots, I needed toe caps, um, I got some leather scraps, got them wet, uh, pressed them down and they became very soft and malleable and were, I was able to get this really nice curve over these toes and then I used rubber bands to secure them in place. Keep in mind that when the leather is wet, it is going to be very impressionable and it's going to retain any of the impressions that it takes on during this time. So, for instance, these rubber bands left some really deep impressions in the leather. I planned for that and I placed them outside of the area that I needed to use. But that's just something to keep in mind. If you're going to be wet molding, you want to be able to secure it outside of the perimeter of the actual piece that you want to use. So on the right hand side I have this pauldron in progress. It is a piece of leather that is um, secured over a lampshade actually is what that was. Um, the way that I did that was by hot gluing the lampshade onto this piece of plywood and then stapling the leather down. This was completely soaked on both sides when I started working with it because I needed to get some really intense curves in this piece. So um, I started on one side and was stretching and pulling the entire time. I think I left it there overnight for sure, maybe for like 48 hours, um, until it was completely dry and then took it off and it maintained the shape uh, pretty well. And I'll show you some pictures of what that turned into later on. So let's move on to talking about coloring, coloring your leather and the options that you have for that. Um, these are all different types of leather dyes. Leather dyes are a really great option for when you want um, your color to have some type of translucency to it or to show the natural texture of the leather. So this is a dyed piece. Um, generally, anytime that I, any, I'm making something that I want to look like leather and have this brown or whatever tint to it, um, I'm definitely going to be using a dye. And this just allows any sort of stretch marks or surface features, things like that are going to still be visible and provide some really um, interesting texture to your leather items. Um, so there are different types, water, alcohol, oil-based. For the most part, I've used water-based dyes. Um, 
super convenient, non-toxic, easy to clean up. You still want to wear gloves because it's a pretty intense pigment that will stain your skin for a few days if you don't. Um, but they're very safe and easy to use, and so that's what I usually go to. You can also dilute them with water since they're water-based. Um, so this is the EcoFlow series of dyes. The alcohol-based dye that I have in this picture is the black alcohol-based dye. Um, anytime I need something that's black, I always pick up this one because it's much, much more opaque and intense than either the water-based or the oil-based black dye. Um, so I recommend that one. Um, also oil-based dyes, similar thing, you would dilute them with oil. Um, they have some really nice rich pigments, but usually it's just more convenient for me to use the water-based. Um, if you're going to be painting your leather and you want it to be opaque, uh, these are the best options for that. Um, the Angelus leather paint as well as the Leather Studio paints are both um, acrylic based paints but they have a flex agent in them that allows them to move um, and flex with your pieces which is super convenient this is the reason why you don't want to use a regular acrylic paint is because it's going to um, harden and be stiff and if your piece needs to flex the paint is not going to flex with it if it's above a certain thickness and that will break and crack off over time and give you problems um, so, Angelus is a great company. They have a huge range of colors. Unfortunately, I don't know of any place you can buy them um, locally. Uh, I have to get them online. There's, you can get them on Amazon, um, Turtle Feathers, other retailers sell them as well. Um, so, Angelus is a really, really great option for doing leather or vinyl painting. Uh, leather Studio is um, a brand that is sold at Joanne stores. and they're nice paints, they're a good quality pigment, they just have a very, very limited selection of colors right now. So if there's something that I need like right away the same day, I'll drive to the store and get this one. But it's pretty much limited to primary colors and like neon colors, um, so there's not a lot there. This Meltonian New Life spray is um, my go-to for anything that needs to be metallic. Um, so this silver color is my base color for anything that I'm doing that um, I need to imitate metal with my pieces. I will usually do a black dye as the base coat and then do the silver over that, um, a clear coat to help the texture and then would weather it on, with any sort of watered down acrylic paints. You can use acrylic paints on leather uh, depending on how flexible your item needs to be, but you can definitely uh, make really thin acrylic washes and then that is not gonna um, crack off usually over time, you should be pretty good to go with that. And acrylics, regular acrylics are what I use to do all of the other uh, weathering and discoloration on my, my fake metal pieces. Uh, sealants are also something you should look into if you're going to be dyeing or painting. Um, Angelus makes a variety of different finishes. Um, all of the Angelus things, or any of the acrylic paints, can be watered down and run through an airbrush. If that's something that you have available to you, that's a great way to apply it. Or you can brush it on. Um, it does a good job of self-leveling, so it's a really nice paint. Uh, Saddle Lac in the middle is a super shiny clear coat that is um, designed to be used on leather. I get this at Tandy as well. It's uh, from Thebeings. They do dyes and, and things of that nature as well. Um, this is really, really intense and it will kind of melt your colors a little bit. It won't cause them to run, but if you're spraying it on, just be aware that um, you're essentially liquefying whatever paint is currently sitting on top of your, um, your piece, so you don't want anything to touch it during that time. Um, but that process will kind of change the surface texture of your painted pieces. So like I said, I'll do a silver coat and then I'll do the clear coat on top of that and that provides sort of like a rough surface for any additional washes to cling to and sit down into um, if I'm doing weathering on top of that. Uh, finally, there's this EcoFlow, um, different sealants like a Super Sheen or a Satin Sheen. Um, these you would apply like dye using cotton or sheep's wool or something of that nature and just brushing onto the surface. All right. Um, if you're going to be doing very much leather work, starting to get into this, 
it's worthwhile to keep a little record of your swatches to keep samples of all the different colors that you've used or that you own. Um, they do have sample swatches frequently available in places like Tandy that sell paints and, and colors and dyes for leather. But the problem with those is that they're a business and they're trying to sell their nice hides and so they're not going to make swatches out of their best leathers. They're using like the crappy leather that's dried out sitting in the back and it's really sunburned and they can't sell it. So I've been to Tandy and looked at swatches before and just been handed these like crusty dried out chunks of leather that have like dark ass dyes on them that like it's it's not very trustworthy essentially. So. For that reason, I like to keep my own swatches. This is just um, tiny scraps of leather that I punched holes on and, and um, strung onto this chain that is a record of, of whatever colors that I have currently available and that I might want to use in the future. So here is um, the various stages of progress for my little belt buckle guy here. Um, as you can see, starting out with some raw leather cutting it with knives, doing the edges, gluing it all together, assembling this little piece on the, the left. Then in the middle, um, I'll start with a black dye. This is the alcohol-based dye um, from Phoebe's that is um, the super intense black. I'll usually leave that for like eight hours and then take a paper towel and then rub against it to make sure that there's no additional dye that's just sitting um, on the surface. And that'll help kind of polish it up and, and clean it and make it look really nice. Um, next, this has got a coat of the Silver New Life on it. Um, I forgot to mention that the New Life paints are also extremely toxic. Uh, they have some really nasty chemicals in them. So definitely use a respirator if you plan on painting with the New Life. Absolutely work outside, work in a really well ventilated area if you have like a spray booth or something like that. Um, then finally, that silver is coated with the saddle lac in order to liquefy that paint and give it a, a texture that will accept more weathering. And so then I used regular acrylic paints as well as some watered down Angelus paints to apply um, additional finishes. I think I used black, um, umber brown, um, bronze, as well as some gold tones to create this like sort of faux <coughs> metallic weathered looking belt buckle that I have here, and you can come take a closer look at later if you want to. So, well, I actually just do that. So these are some additional examples of how, how all of these items turned out. This is a, a close-up shot of my uh, wrist cuff, as well as the holster that went with it. Um, on this far left side, you can see the shoes that I made for Asana up top, and those um, tooled crosses that were painted as well as the boot caps right below that. This is what they ended up looking like after they were all trimmed up and painted and sealed. Um, those were for Kimino from Anime Oremo, which is really fun to cosplay from. Uh, and some additional armor. So this guy right over here, this is my husband, um, modeling this Sydney Lostero costume that I made him for Akon. And he is wearing the pauldrons that I shaped, uh, that I wet molded over those lampshades. So that was able to like really, really maintain that curved shape very well. Um, it was a pretty, pretty effective way of, of building that armor. And then in the center, there's me as Asana. <laughs> um, again, all of it's leather. Um, my sword was commissioned from a friend. His, his name is... Loves Hina Cosplay, sorry. Yeah, just always gotta throw out that credit. Um, as well as my Merlots down at the end. Uh, you can see how that, that heavily weathered metallic armor turned out. And I believe that is the end of my presentation, so I am ready to take questions, starting with you. Have you had any problems mixing and matching different dyes? Like you were talking about alcohol-based and water-based. Is there any concerns you have to keep in mind when you're mixing and matching it on the same piece? Um, um, well, you won't want to actually mix the dyes together, which I don't think is what you're asking, but just no. to clarify. Um, the pieces themselves, I guess if you're, you can paint um, with a paintbrush if you need to have like very intricate pictures where colors are close together and you're, you're doing like an image or something like that, I would recommend using all of one type of dye. And there is a good color variety available for all three types, so I would recommend, I guess, picking 
pick your favorite and then stick with that throughout one piece. Because if you're applying an oil-based dye right next to or on top of a water-based dye, those aren't going to interact because it's oil and water. Um, but I, if you're using all one type of dye, you can blend kind of on the piece. You can blend as you're working um, water-based dyes or oil, all oil-based dyes would be um, probably the best way to go for that. Great. Do you have any more questions? Yes, right here. Is your slide deck available to download online somewhere? I don't have this available, but I plan on um, releasing a video of this whole um, panel, so you'll be able to watch it again if you want um, some more reference. I'm going to be launching a YouTube channel here within the next month or two. Um, so if you're interested in this, it will have a lot more detailed um, tutorials, as well as tutorials for the entire costume that I'm wearing right now. Um, I've been filming a lot recently, and I have filmed videos on the construction of my cuff, as well as my belt, and every single step that I went through to make that, including distressing the pieces. So that information will all be available. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, where do you get your leather from? I buy most of my stuff from Tandy. Um, they are a Texas-based Texas company um, out of Fort Worth, which I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So uh, that's super convenient and close for me, and I, I tend to go there. You can also get um, places like High House online, um, sell all of this stuff as well. So yes. is that also cow-based, goat-based? Uh... Vetch tanned leather that I spent most of the, the panel talking about um, is all cowhide. Um, the chromium tan leather can be anything, whatever whatever exists. They have stingray leather that you can buy at um, at Tandy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got like this weird pebbly surface. Um, yes, yes. This particular is all cowhide. Yes. Is there a space you can go to learn this, like a studio or some Um. Tandy has, I believe, some sort of classes or workshops available in certain stores. I've never been to any of them, so I can't really vouch for that. I don't know of any like leather maker spaces, unfortunately. That would be pretty neat, um, but I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Yes. So first for your chest piece, how you had to punch in every single hole, did you hand stitch every single one? I did. That was a, a very lengthy process, <laughs> yes. Um, they do have um, hole punches that do multiple holes at once, so that expedites it a lot, but if you're doing a curve, those are like set up in different, whatever, two prong, four prong, six prong, and they're all straight pieces, so you have to like shift it around the curve, which is pretty obnoxious. So. If you're, if you're wanting a lot of really fine control, you're going to end up using one and two hole punches a lot. Yes? I presume they have an automated hole puncher that is powered, so you don't like kill your... Like a sewing machine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I'm sure that, that probably exists. If it does and it's not just an industrial sewing machine, then it's probably very expensive. Like the grommet presses and things of like the... Um, various punch presses that you can buy are like $200 from Tandy. So it depends on how much you want to invest into that. There is, um, there is a lot of costs associated with all of this, but um, per square foot, leather is not really any more expensive than, say, Warbla. And if you compare how much incredibly more durable this is than Warbla, um, I, I think that it's no contest. Um, I would rather use leather any day. If I can use leather, I probably will. Do we have any more questions? All right, well then I guess I'm done. Thank you guys so much for coming and listening.